I've just made one of the stupidest purchases I've made in a very long time. <laughs> I bought a HD DVD drive, and I'm going to try using it with a pile of random movies I bought off eBay for $8 on my Mac. This should be interesting to non-Mac users as well. I didn't realize at the time I was making the first of a series of videos when I made a short video about Apple SuperDrive and one about using Blu-ray on the Mac. But I'm back with a third installment of what I'll call Mac OS and defunct media, this time with HD DVD, a failed media format that tried to be the successor to DVD. <laughs> Obviously this failed quite spectacularly, and no sane person should care about this on the Mac, let alone in 2024. So here I am. So let's start with the truncated history. As a failed media format, I doubt most people remember much about HD DVD. Even someone as uncool as me who has a YouTube channel talking about things like HD DVD hasn't thought about HD DVD in 15 years. HD DVD is the Betamax to VHS, meaning it was the failed format. Actually, on second thought, I think I'm being a bit too generous. Maybe I'd call it the Mr. Pib to Dr. Pepper. What I'm trying to say is it's the inferior product, and unlike Betamax, Sony actually won this time. HD DVD was created by Toshiba. Both Blu-ray and HD DVD were created roughly in the same time frame, for starting about 2002, and both were released in 2006. The high definition format divide was sparked by a debate within the DVD forum around a newly refined blue laser technology as the disc would be much more expensive and physically different from DVDs. The blue laser crowd splintered off wanting the more expensive discs forming the Blu-ray group. Ironically, after the split, the DVD form would end up adopting its own blue laser standard, one that would require a lot less retooling for DVD plants to produce the discs, thus making them cheaper to produce. Well, in theory. There are some interesting articles contesting the price per gigabyte between the two formats. This article, as well as other sources, are linked in the description. Also during this time, it was thought that Blu-ray discs might require cartridges due to their propensity for scratching. The format war was kind of boring, but eventually TDK announced a better polymer coating which made Blu-ray more durable than most optical media. Technology wasn't the only thing at play, the other part of the battle was royalties. Sony felt like it missed out on a lot of money with the DVD as they gave in on the format war that was brewing between Multimedia CD and Super Density Disc, which IBM mediated and merged both technologies to create DVD. This stuff gets pretty dry, but on screen are the big backers of HD DVD and Blu-ray, the biggest being Microsoft for HD DVD and Sony for Blu-ray, and we'll come back to that. On screen is a breakdown, but I know a good chunk of my audience likes to listen rather than watch. HD DVD came in two variants, 15 GB single layer and 30 GB dual layer. Blu-ray came in 25 GB single layer and a 50 GB dual layer. HD DVD didn't have regions or quite as robust copy protection like ROM marking, invisible watermarks to prevent mass copying, which contributed to studios preferring Blu-ray. It really looked like there's going to be a protracted format war until Sony put their thumb on the scale and decided to ship Blu-ray with its PlayStation 3, which ultimately resulted in a console that cost $100 more than its competitor, the Xbox 360. Microsoft with HD DVD was unwilling to match Sony's dedication and instead tepidly released an external HD DVD drive for the Xbox 360, which is the drive that I happened to buy. <laughs> there just aren't that many HD DVD drives for sale on eBay. Microsoft never did use HD DVD as a format for its games, and that's a very good thing. We'll see why later. It was a massive flop at $199 and was on the market for less than two years. By 2008, the format wars were over and Sony had scored a Pyrrhic victory. Sony sold fewer consoles due to the PlayStation 3's price, but Blu-ray won. Both sides lost out on countless movie sales as consumers weren't willing to commit to either format until one was declared the winner. Meanwhile, the competition didn't stay idle. In 2008, digital movie rentals would rise with Apple announcing a partnership with all major studios. This was a pretty big deal, and it's something we now take for granted. Now that we have the context of history, let's take a look at this HD DVD player. The first thing that just jumps out are the aesthetics. 
You might even mistake this from the side view as a Xbox 360, and that is because it's designed to be paired with the Xbox 360. This thing is also comically large, and dare I say, an absolute unit. I even checked to see if this thing has its own gravitational pull, and the only thing it seems to attract is regret. Here it is, next to my MacBook 2017, a form factor that really needs to come back. This drive unsurprisingly weighs more than the MacBook does at 3.1 pounds. If you haven't seen my Blu-ray video, the external Blu-ray drives of the past decade are quite small and not much larger than the Apple Super Drive. HD DVD just barely lasted long enough to get slim drives. As far as I know, there's only one slim drive made by Toshiba. I really wanted to find this model for this video as it's much more exotic, but it seems to be fantastically rare used. I couldn't even find one for sale. Also to add insult to injury with the Microsoft Drive, it requires an external power cable and I had to buy one separately. Oh, but this drive does manage to get worse. It requires mini USB, which is not micro USB, and I'm not sure why they didn't just use full size USB, as those cables are abundantly more common. One minor upside is this is a two port USB 2.0 hub for some reason, I guess wired Xbox 360 controllers? Anyhow, to make this device a little more confusing, when it's plugged into my Mac, it shows up as two devices. Xbox 360 HD DVD player and the Xbox 360 HD DVD player memory unit. According to Wikipedia, this drive has 256 megabytes of storage for HD DVD data and game saves, although macOS doesn't seem capable of addressing it. The drive idles at about 1.5 to 1.6 watts. To be fair, that's not very much power, but that's still more than the Blu-ray combo drive I tried. When I opened up the drive for the first time, it already had a disc in it. Born Ultimatum on HD DVD. That's a free movie, assuming it actually plays. Consider that foreshadowing. The other smattering of movies I got were completely random, and honestly, I didn't care about the quality of movies so much as having a pile to test against. And we'll talk about in a minute why. The pile of HD DVDs I bought came with one other unadvertised freebie, and this one's pretty interesting. This is the Xbox 360 HD DVD disc, and this is for installing the HD DVD drive with the Xbox 360. And I don't know if this is still required or not, because I don't have an Xbox 360. Editor Greg here. As far as I understand it, this DVD only contains a firmware update. I'm pretty sure it's no longer needed. HD DVD is a funky format and some of the discs shipped with both standard definition DVD and HD DVD sides. Like this Fast Times of Ridgemount High disc. One side is DVD, the other is HD DVD. Shipping a disc like this comes at the cost of foregoing dual layer, so this movie is only 13 gigabytes, which comes out to be 18.3 megabits per second if you disregard the alternative audio tracks. King Kong, on the other hand, uses a dual layer disc, and the movie is about 27 gigabytes, but being almost exactly twice the runtime. Like Fast Times of Ridgemount High, if you disregard the two alternative audio tracks, the bit rate is almost exactly the same. HD DVD packs in a higher bit rate than most streaming services do at 1080p. I got a little bit of flack last time as I didn't go deep into video quality being a factor of digitizing and mastering and codecs and so forth, but HD DVD will still likely offer better quality than most streaming services do, assuming similar mastering. This has to be the most idiotic thing I've done to get a shot. I snowshoed three miles. Just so people can see inside my bag, I have my camera, my steady cam, and two laptops. What the hell was I thinking? The upside is I'm literally the only person here. This is Todd Lake looking at Broken Top in Central Oregon. Let's get back to the drive. I had to open up this drive myself, which requires popping off the side panel, then removing the torque screws, and then sliding the top off. If we remove the hood, we can see the board and the power in the USB controller. There's just nothing exciting here. It's literally a five and a quarter inch drive in a bulky housing. macOS natively reads HD DVD, and that might sound surprising, but it isn't. HD DVD uses UDF 2.5, which is the same as Blu-ray. Also fun fact, I learned that UDF 2.5 was added to OS 10 10.5, so I'm definitely going to check that out 
on my Power Mac G4. <laughs> when you first stick in an HDVD disc into macOS, Apple's DVD player automatically opens. <laughs> Obviously, it won't play back in this software, and macOS is confused and thinks this is a DVD. Even the icon is a DVD disc. According to The Verge, VLC now supports HD DVD Evo files, although after further exploration, it just doesn't have the ability to play back encrypted Evo files. If you try and play a disc, you'll just get a avant-garde art display, and unlike Blu-ray support, you can't just simply install libAACS and circumvent the encryption. VLC's official wiki on HD DVDs for version 3.0 is blank. If there's any info on playing back encrypted EVO files, I couldn't find it. I even asked on Reddit and I just got crickets. So I'll be goddamned if there's a way to get encrypted HD DVD playback natively on macOS. I spent too many hours looking and as near as I can tell, macOS just never had a player and if anyone knows of one, let me know in the comments. That leaves one and only one alternative, which is to rip them, aka remove the DRM. I didn't cover ripping in my Blu-ray video as I wasn't trying to be practical. If you're looking to rip HD DVDs or Blu-rays, it's pretty much a one-stop shop, which is Make MKV, which strips the DRM without transcoding the media. You'll miss out on the HDVD menus, but that's about it. Using Make MKV is pretty much brain dead simple. It only takes a single mouse button click and it comes with a free 30-day trial. It's really easy, and tell us not. I was able to rip three of my seven HD DVDs. The others received errors about decryption. It also made this horrible grinding sound. I even tried using this app in Windows, but the problem persisted. I won't bore you with the details, but I also tried some other apps too in Windows. HD DVD suffers deterioration, aka disc rot, at a much higher rate than most media formats from what I could glean on random Reddit posts and forum posts. Three out of my five discs wasn't nearly as uncommon as one would expect. HD DVD is quite literally a dead media format, as it may soon no longer exist, and it functions as a science experiment on entropy. It's good that MS never published 360 games on HD DVD. This is why I wanted a stack of HD DVDs in order to mess with because I was aware of this problem. But I must admit, without the ability to play back the discs, I'm just assuming this is disc rock and not an issue with Make MKV. This brings us to an inevitable conclusion. HD DVD is a garbage format compared to Blu-ray. It's not only inferior on a quality level, it's also inferior on a technical level. Due to its extremely brief existence, there's almost zero ways to play back media on a computer that doesn't involve stripping copy protection. And even on Windows, the options are mostly non-existent. Popular playback apps on Windows like Cyberlink Power DVD removed HD DVD support, and ArcSoft's Total Media has been discontinued for about a decade now. As near as I can tell, Microsoft never added HD DVD support in Media Center. My Mac Pro 2019 has Windows 10 installed, which is after Microsoft dropped Windows Media Center, so I don't have a way to test HD DVD playback in older Windows. I could be wrong here. The only thing realistically you can do with HD DVD on a computer is archive them into MKVs, which falls into a legally gray territory. For a totally stupid experiment, I plugged my HD DVD player into my Power Mac G4, where it's actually able to read HD DVDs. Although, as mentioned, Leopard does have UDF 2.5 support. There's just literally no way to play back these discs in Leopard, as the support is even more limited but it is kind of amusing. I would have liked to try HD DVD burning in Mac OS, but tracking down blank media, let alone the drive, is just too much work for something that likely works fine and would have just contributed very little to this video. In a nearly forgotten moment in late 2007, Toshiba introduced a triple layer HD DVD that was 51 gigabytes total. Thus, HD DVD could store more information than Blu-ray, although 17 gigabytes per layer instead of 25 gigabytes per layer. 
later. Other than news covering the original press release and some forum posts, information is incredibly thin about this format, and it's sometimes contradictory. It seems like many, if not all, drives would have been incompatible with this new format, and thus it never made it to market. Probably the most interesting HD DVD devices were Toshiba's Vardia HD DVD players, which were released only in Japan. They had HD tuners, a hard drive, and the ability to burn DVD RWs. Even that's not that exciting, and that's a good summary of HD DVD as a format. HD DVD inevitably was doomed to be a cliff note in the story of Blu-ray and the rise and fall of optical media. And that's how it exactly should be. It's completely forgettable, and its most interesting fact is its inferiority. Before I go, I'd like to thank my Patreon members for enabling me to make such irresponsible purchases.